Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Working Faster in Premiere Pro. I'm the NLE Ninja, and I'm going to provide some tips that can help you navigate Premiere Pro CS6 like a champ. Let's start off with our first tip, mapping shortcuts for everything. Premiere Pro CS6 has introduced a few new features with the new trimming options and more. But if you want to move at the speed of thought, you're going to want to map a shortcut for everything. I provided my shortcuts as a link to download, but you can modify the existing CS6 shortcuts by going to the Premiere Pro drop down menu and selecting Keyboard Shortcuts. Do your best to have a shortcut for the most common editing tasks. Also, if you're curious about installing custom shortcuts from system to system, follow the Adobe Help link below or watch my first Working Faster in Premiere Pro video. If you're like myself and you're used to how Final Cut Pro 7 nested sequences, it works similar here. However, there is a caveat. Premiere Pro doesn't give you the option to name your sequences before nesting. If we map a shortcut for renaming items in our timeline, we can work around this. First, Let's nest an item in our timeline. Once you've done that, select your nested sequence, either right click or with a custom keyboard shortcut, rename your sequence. A dialog box will pop up giving you the option to rename. Name your sequence to taste, but before you press OK, hit Command or Control A on your keyboard to select all. Press Command or Control C on your keyboard to copy. Hit OK on the dialog box. Your nested sequence is renamed in the timeline. However, it's not renamed in your project browser. Select the nested sequence in your project browser to get the title highlighted. Press Command or Control V on your keyboard to paste and your nested sequence will have the same title as the one in the timeline. This should help out when you have to deal with a lot of nested sequences and you want to stay organized. Another cool tip about nested sequences is that you can reveal them with the keyboard shortcut if you map it, which, in my opinion, is quicker than double-clicking it. I have a clip on track 1 and a nested sequence on track 2. With track 2 highlighted in the track panel and my playhead over the nest, I'm going to hit my custom keyboard shortcut Shift-T to reveal the sequence. Voila! My nested sequence opens up and shows me what the contents of it are. If you have multiple nested sequences in one timeline, the shortcut to reveal the nest will depend on the hierarchy of the tracks you have highlighted on the track panel. This next tip is something I stumbled upon while trying to create some new effect tutorials in Premiere Pro. If you want to move the anchor point of your clip and have it centered on the screen, your position and anchor point values have to be identical. Here's an example. Say I want to move the anchor point of my clip to the upper left-hand corner. 
I would adjust the numerical values until I had it right. My clip is now offset from the center. To remedy this, all we have to do is type in the anchor point values for X and Y in our position parameter, and our clip is centered back in place, like so. So now that we have our clip centered back in place, let's say we want to rotate it, it will now rotate from the left hand side, like so. With the introduction of adjustment layers in Premiere Pro, it opens up the opportunity to control how we apply effects to our clips. I was recently informed through Twitter that you can turn any imported logo, clip, or title created in the title tool into an adjustment layer like you can in After Effects. Let me demonstrate with all three. In my timeline, I have clips with a logo, title, and miscellaneous MoGraph clip on track two. I'm going to right click on my title in my timeline and select Adjustment Layer. It disappears for the moment, but that's because it's invisible right now. I'm going to go to my Effects Browser, type in Find Edges. I'm going to double click the Find Edges filter, and it's going to apply it to my title. We see the title reappear in an interesting way over the top of our clip, because now, since it's acting as an adjustment layer, it's affecting not only the title, but it's also affecting the clip beneath it like an adjustment layer would. Now I'm going to do this to my logo. I have a Creative Cloud logo on top of my video clip. We can't clearly see the video clip right now. So I'm going to right click my logo, select Adjustment Layer, and once again it's going to disappear. If I go to my Effects Browser, type in Replicate, and double click the Replicate filter, the replicate filter on the logo works within the boundaries of the logo and replicates a clip beneath it. Now, I'll turn my MoGraph clip into an adjustment layer. I'm going to right click and select adjustment layer. And once again, it disappears. If I go to my effects browser, type in Solarize and double click the filter. It'll apply the Solarize filter within the boundaries of my MoGraph clip, but also affect the clip beneath it. If I go to my effects control panel, twirl down the motion parameter and change the position, we can create an interesting effect like so. With adjustment layers in Premiere Pro and the ability to turn anything into an adjustment layer, the creative options have now been expanded. One of the new features in CS6 is that you have the option of having the work area bar on or off. If you click on the drop down menu in the timeline and select the work area bar, you could choose to have it checked or unchecked. I choose to have mine unchecked so I don't have to worry about the Alt left bracket or Alt right bracket keys to set a render range and open those keyboard shortcut combos to other functions. Now my in and out points will set my render range. One of my favorite editing techniques in Final Cut Pro 7 was the ability to option drag clips to create duplicates. This aided in compositing as well as other editing techniques. CS6 put this feature in and it felt like home. I have a clip on track 1. I'm going to select it. I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key on my keyboard. I'm going to drag up to create a duplicate. I'm going to drag left to create a duplicate. And I'm going to drag right to create one. If I have a clip on track 2 or above, I can hold down the Option or Alt key on my keyboard and drag a duplicate in every direction.
My final tip involves a new feature of uninterrupted playback. With this feature, I can cut a solid to the beat of my music track by pressing Command-K or Shift-Command-K and adding edits across my solid and or my music track, and I could use that to create a quick montage with some clips. Let me demonstrate. As you can see, I've added edits across my solid, and now all I have to do to get a rough montage is option drag some clips from my project browser onto my cuts, like so. After I added my clips on top of my solids, I added a out point towards the last frame of my last clip. Now if I press my keyboard shortcut shift forward slash to play from in to out, this is what I have. There you go. A nice, quick, but rough montage thanks to the brand new feature of uninterrupted playback. Now, uninterrupted playback doesn't just limit to me being able to make quick montages. I can also update keyframes and effects while I have this playing at the same time. So give this tip a try out next time you need to cut a quick montage to the beat of music, and you won't be disappointed. Well, I hope you enjoyed these quick tips, and they help you work faster in Premiere Pro CS6. I've only had the program a few days, but my extensive knowledge from CS5.5 carried over, and I look forward to learning more about this awesome new addition. Adobe went out of their way to make an NLA they believe that we needed, and I couldn't be happier. My Working Faster in Premiere Pro CS5.5 has some tips that will work in CS6, so check that out if you get a chance. Also, I recently uploaded a new project file for Premiere Pro CS5, CS5.5, and CS6. It's titled NLE Ninja Edits X Volume 2. In that, I provide some transitions and some cool effects you can use in your project, where all you have to do is option drag your footage on top of my placeholders, and you're good to go. Check it out, and let me know what you think. I should have Music Video Effects Volume 4 for Premiere Pro out in the next few weeks, showing you how to create cool effects in CS6 using the native tools and title tool, and some images to enhance the creativity of your projects. But until then, stay creative.